In this video, we'll look at the multiplication of fractions. Now, the process is fairly straightforward. We take the numerators, the top values of the, each fraction, and we just simply multiply them. So one times one is one. And we do the same with the denominators, the bottom values. So four times two is eight. Final answer, one eighth. Let's look at this second fraction. If I was to multiply the two top values, the two numerators and the two denominators, I would end up with some pretty big values. So it's a good idea to see if we can simplify the fractions before we start the multiplication process. Let's have a look at this left-hand fraction. It is actually in its simplest form. And when we check the right-hand fraction, that's also in its lowest form. So now we can check diagonally. We've got 2 and 22. Well, I know there's a common factor here. There's a common factor of 2. 2 goes into 2 once. And 2 goes into 22 11 times. And when we check the 15 and the 9, we can see there's a common factor of 3. 3 goes into 9 3 times. And 3 goes into 15 5 times. So we're left with 1 over 5 times 3 over 11. Now these values are a little bit easier to work with. So we've got 1 times 3 is 3. And 5 times 11, well that's 55. Let's check another one. So question 3 here, we've got 6 over 11. And that fraction is already in its lowest form. Let's multiply it by 2.5. So we've got a mixed number here. Now, when we've got mixed numbers, we need to turn these into improper fractions. So we've got 6 over 11 multiplied by... So converting this into an improper fraction, we take the whole number and we multiply it by the denominator. So 2 times 2, that's 4. And then we add on the numerator. So we've got 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1, that's 5. So it's 5 over 2. And again, before we multiply, we should check if we can cancel any of these fractions. Well, we can see we have a common factor here between the 6 and the 2. 2 goes into 6 three times, and 2 goes into 2 once. So what we've got is, uh, sorry, it's actually 3 over 11 and that's multiplied by 5 over 1 or just 5. Now we multiply the numerators 3 times 5 is 15 and the denominators 11 times 1 is 11. Now if you notice this is an improper fraction so we should convert it back to a mixed number. Well 11 goes into 15 once as one whole and then we have four elevens remaining. One and four elevens for the final answer. Let's check on this final question. Here we have two mixed numbers. So we need to convert these to improper fractions. And again, the process is take the whole number, multiply it by the denominator. So two threes are six. And then add on the numerator. So that would give us eight over three. And just do that again for you. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus the 2 gives me the 8. And it's still over the 3. Same for this one. 1 times 4 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. So it's 5 over 4. Now let's check if we can cancel any of these fractions. Well, here I've got an 8 and a 4. So I've got a common factor of 4. 4 goes into 8 twice. And 4 goes into 4 once. So I've got two thirds, and that's multiplied by five over one, which is five. And then two times five is 10, three times one is three. Again, I've got an improper fraction here, so I need to convert that to a mixed number. So 10 divided by three would be three with one third remaining. So three goes into 10, three times, 
three threes are nine, which means there's one third left over. 